What is going on, YouTube Reverse? John Stanek from Johnny Radio here, bringing you another top five on this glorious top five Friday. And folks, we made it to the end of the 1980s, the top five albums of 1989. In my humble opinion, let's get right to it. At number five, Pump by Aerosmith. Such a great record. I think kind of underrated in Aerosmith's discography. A lot of people hearken back to the 70s stuff, but as far as the 80s goes, I think this was their best. I mean, from the opening single, Love in an Elevator, you also had Janie's Got a Gun, Other Side, uh, one of their greatest ballads of all time, What It Takes. Um, there's, there's really not a weak spot on the album. Even the musical interludes are cool and uh, Steven Tyler and Joe Perry just at their absolute 80s best got to love it. So that's my number five. Now at number four... Full Moon Fever by Tom Petty, another great record of this year that almost reads like a greatest hits. I mean, you got Free Fallen, I Won't Back Down, Running Down a Dream. I mean, three of his greatest songs of his entire career. I think they even played all three of those songs when they performed at the Super Bowl. Uh, so you know that, I mean, this is just a gigantic album. And I think one great thing about Tom Petty is like he never rested on his laurels. He always wanted to get better and better, and he did as he went. I mean, uh, this coming after the Damn the Torpedoes era in the 70s, and then in the 90s with Wildflowers, he kept improving as a songwriter. Just so great, and just my number four. So now at number three, Passion by Peter Gabriel, which this is a soundtrack actually for Martin Scorsese's The Last Temptation of Christ, which if you haven't seen it, uh, it's actually a great film. It had a lot of controversy attached to it when it came out back then, but I think uh, time has been kind to it and, and kind of the ideas that it gives you. Uh, but the music by Peter Gabriel uh, is just fantastic. Uh, it, it serves the film so well, but it also uh, stands alone by itself as just a great uh, body of music just from the opening track, The Feeling Begins, which uh, you get that kind of Middle Eastern sound, uh, which feels very timeless, but then these very modern sounding uh, huge drums that Peter Gabriel had been working with, these gated drums from the 80s come in and it fits together seamlessly. It, it uh, creates this kind of world music vibe that feels both timeless and modern at the same time. And throughout you get these just amazing performances by uh, vocalists from across the globe that Gabriel worked with and you can just tell he put his heart and soul into this project. Um, just amazing and very groundbreaking for the time. And that's just at number three. So now at number two, In Step by Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble. Man, one of the greatest Stevie Ray Vaughan albums, uh, which, I mean, that's really saying something because from Texas Flood all the way through to this record, man, everything he did was practically flawless. Just one of the greatest lead guitarists of all time. And he really kind of came into his own on this album because he had just kicked uh, his habit of, of drinking and drugs, uh, was totally sober in making this album and touring for it and really kind of conveyed that message on the tour sadly right before uh his tragic death on a helicopter but oh my gosh so many great songs on this album from crossfire tightrope wall of denial like some of the best rockers of all of stevie's career i mean you know he's coming out blazing with the houses rocking uh but then you know he's got some other uh softer songs that come toward the end of the album as well uh just fantastic all the way through not a weak track on this record and uh rest in peace man and Stevie Ray, one of the all-time greats. And that's just at number two. So now at number one. Mm -hmm. 
Bleach by Nirvana. Man, I love this album. And, you know, it took me a while to discover it because like a lot of people in 1991, uh, I assume Nevermind was when they came on the scene. But no, there is a backstory. And uh, this is almost like a blueprint for Nevermind and all of the grunge era. Um, you know, underground, Bleach was pretty big. Uh, I mean, Dave Grohl left his band high and dry and joined Nirvana when they lost their drummer just based on the fact that this album Bleach had been out and he's like, oh man, this is a step up in my career. Because I mean, uh, besides the cover Love Buzz, which is probably the catchiest thing on this album, you've got About a Girl, which shows that uh, Cobain was a really great songwriter, and uh, something that could uh, actually work in acoustic setting, which it did on the Unplugged album and is a little bit Beatlesque. But then you've got, of course, the hard rockers like School and Negative Creep and Blue and Mr. Mustache, like all these crazy cool songs with these Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath kind of riffs that uh, were so needed at the time in 89 because so much of the, the rock uh, scene at the time was like hair bands and it was really kind of um, saccharine pop stuff everywhere you turned and uh, we were ready for a change, man. Uh, it didn't quite happen overnight with Bleach, but it was like, all right, man, coming out of the gate strong with Cobain and Chris Novoselic and about to be Dave Grohl for 91. So uh, that is my top five, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think. What would your top five be? If you're so bold, leave me a top 10. Uh, 89, another great year in music history. And uh, guys, we're moving forward. Um, in the, the next month, I'm going to give you my total of the 80s, my top five songs and top five albums of the whole decade. Going to be hard to whittle down, but I'm going to try and do it. And then uh, we're going to keep this train going, man, into the new year with the 90s. So get ready for Nirvana and some other surprises along the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. Top fives every Friday, album reviews, so much more. Thank you. And as always, Viva La Vinyl. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and be sure to ring the bell for notifications so you can always see great quality content like you're seeing on the screen right now. Thank you so much for supporting Johnny Radio, and I'll see you soon.